In the depths of hell they lie, blast entertainment. It stands tall with the likes of Phoenix Games, as one of the most notorious video game publishers to grace Earth. They didn't publish as many games as the shit-covered bird, but each of their releases certainly were a bomb. Ow. Nineteen games. Nineteen games by these motherfuckers. Nineteen games, more like nineteen months to make a video. <laughs> yep, this was fucking worth it. All that mess. That was just. That's just. That was just. That was completely worth it. Jesus fucking Christ! What am I even doing with this video already? It's a lot of sewage to get through. All right, that's a lot. So we're not going to do all of them because I ain't going to go through that. All right. So we'll go through five. Just five. Yeah? Five. First off is Casper and the Ghostly Trio with its Jizz font. Good start. And there's apparently 11 levels to get through and I'll uh, let's, uh, let's go. Oh God. That's uh, that's a good amount of text to hide the fact you didn't even make an opening cinematic to tell the goddamn story. So Casper's three uncles, the ghostly trio, <laughs> have captured Casper's best friend, Wendy the Good Little Witch. They need her to cast spells on a special potion they are making, which will give them the strength and power to rule Ghostland. Wait, the ghostly uncles are evil now? How the hell are they even threatening? Look at them. They're smaller than Casper. Okay, okay, I've wasted enough time. Let's just get into the first level. Where... Where do I even begin? Just just look at Casper himself. He doesn't even look like a damn go- <gasps> Holy shit, that was scary! I guess they weren't lying on the back of the box. This is the most spectacular adventure ever. Casper looks like a marshmallow. A, a bit of Italian meringue that's gone through a horrific process to remember a humanoid shape. Look at his eyes! Just... Okay, okay, so we're stuck outside the courtyard and unable to enter the house to tackle that big three ghost. So we need to find four keys to open one door. Ah yes, those famous quad-locked front doors that require four separate keys. I mean, not that that matters, because you know, Casper's a ghost! Have you... Have you ever heard of a ghost that can't go through objects, through walls? What is this bullshit? I mean, I know that a game without any objects to collide into wouldn't exactly be a great game, but I mean, it's so obvious. Let's talk about the combat real quick, shall we? It's spam square. That's it. That's, that's all you need to know. There's a shitty lock-on system when all you gotta do is keep hitting the square button to make sure those little Hadoukens hit the mark. And look how many times it takes to kill one enemy. Well, there is one other way to attack, by throwing pink little bombs. I'm assuming these are the potions that Wendy made, they create a huge shockwave that kill things in one shot. And not even have to hit the enemy to kill them apparently? But they also hurt you. That's a great weapon right there. My god, does Casper have to be so weak he can't even survive being in the vague vicinity of where a pink energy potion explodes? So after roaming around finding all four keys, we unlock a cement wall to go into a crypt. Let's just get to the next level, shall we? What the fuck? You saw that, right? I went down underground and ended up on the rooftop. So this is apparently the bonus stage where you get to collect Chaos Emeralds while outrunning a huge electric field. You, you couldn't even make the gem spin. It's... moving on. And now we are actually into the crypt and... Uh, 
More keys, more spamming, more absolute dog shit, except this time it's worse because of the confined spaces and the mind-numbing grey that seems to invade all pixels of the screen and seep into every orifice of your body and until you too become grey and lifeless. I think I'm done here. The, the terrible controls, awful music, sick in the camera, it, 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 it's too much to bear. I can't take it. Also because I got stuck here and I couldn't make this jump and I jumped and I jumped and I jumped and I jumped into no avail. Ah. <sighs> I just fucking rage quit and I thought I had enough footage, honestly. Next up on the firing squad is Paddington Bear, the children's book character mainly popular in Britain, which makes sense seeing how Blast is based there. Developed by Atomic Planet, they saw this and went, sure, we'll wrap this up in a box and sell it to impressionable little kids. Little kids don't know the difference between good and bad, right? They watch those awful children YouTube videos for hours on end. We'll do the same, but in video game form. I am now going to show you the main menu screen. And when I do, I want you to remember, someone got paid for this. There's no justice in the world. Did anyone try? Did, did one person in quality control look at this menu and say, Hey, uh, uh, could you change the font so it looks like it's actually written on an easel? Could you uh, change the perspective of the text to make it look like it's been written on there? Could you put the X button a bit small so it doesn't smash into your eyeball the moment you start the game? Could you at all, just perhaps, make this look like it wasn't made by children? So, right here, should give you an indicator of the quality we are about to witness. First level is pretty basic, bathroom is flooded, gotta do some simple platforming while watching the absolute stiffest animation I've ever seen for a video game character, and that's it. It's actually unbelievable how little there is to work with. It's the same stuff in the second minigame as well, but instead of avoiding water in a flooded bathroom, you are now avoiding police officers in a train station. Probably because you're harboring a bomb or something, that's the only reason I can think of to avoid police officers when you're lost. Next stage, search for three articles of clothing while avoiding salesmen. Should be easy enough, walk around the store until you find the clothes. 20 minutes later. I can't find them. But where are they? What? Are you fucking kidding me? You gotta go and check each rack and search the damn clothes until you by chance you happen to find them? What kid is gonna get enjoyment out of that? Hey kids, do you like waiting around in your video game? Well boy gee howdy do I have the game for you. Wait for spinning objects to slowly, painfully, slide into view. So you can just put them over there. And over there. By far the best thing about this scenario in particular is that every so often a Vegemite cheesy scroll spins by and it makes Paddington Bear jet across the room with fire coming out of his ass. Next is taking photos. That's it. Moving on. We're now stuck in an attic and we have to find a key to get out. Oh I'm sorry, did I say keys? No, I meant marmalade sandwiches. Finding a key in the basement maze would make sense, but instead you were forced to collect sandwiches in order in order to, in order to open a door. Next is Paddington Bear learning to ride a bike and doing bunny hops like a sick cunt. Look at this guy go, he is absolutely killing it. <laughs> Next, we have to collect objects such as plates, presents and foods back from the back of hedgehogs to gain more slices of bread. But I noticed something in this one. There's no needed number of items to be returned. So I just stood still. I was done. You see this footage right here? I was done. I gave up. I gave up completely. It broke me. It was 1am and I was tired and said enough of is enough. And what was I rewarded with? Congratulations. Also, that's, that's the end of the game. Done. You think there's a joke here? No? No, that's it. Alright, we're done with that one. On to the next piece of crap. Wacky races, man murders, you know. I would say that, oh, maybe there's some hope for this, but no, no. I, I think just playing those two just took all the emotion out of me. Nothing can faze me anymore. So you know what? You know what, Wacky Racers Mad Motors? Hit me. Hit me with your goddamn wrist shot. Come on. I can take anything you give me.
Oh, okay. I'm so sorry, Richard. I truly am. Based on Hanna-Barbera's cartoon series that aired in the late 60s, they thought this would be a perfect adaptation for a racing game. Okay, there's a clear flaw in logic here. I, I don't know anyone who's heard of Wacky Races unless they're a serious cartoon fan. And secondly, nearly 40 fucking years after the show ended. But I won't lie, after watching a couple of episodes, it had potential. I mean, you get to race in cool cars and even a fucking tank. That's gotta be cool, right? So I guess we gotta go on with our heads high optimistic again. It's not good. Where to begin? Where to start? It's like looking at a Where's Walter picture. Where, where do I begin? Ah, the controls. Oh my god, the controls are so damn sensitive. Your, your turning circle is so small, as small as a wristwatch. It's insane. Like here, I'm heading towards this really tight turn at over 120 kilometers an hour, and I still hit the inner coping. Now, secondly, this is a kart racer. Where's the items? Where's the wackiness? It's a series called Wacky Races. You would think that maybe some over-the-top items would be implemented to match the theme, but no, this is some rascal racers shit. Nothing but a booster, which is admittedly mildly cool. You can see the tank actually turning around and it shoots its cannon for speed, which for this company is a godsend of detailing. Third, third is just the physics. Look, look at this. Look at this bullshit. After numerous attempts, I completed the race and I got second place. And... Screw this. Next. Little Britain made by the idiots. You might have noticed by now that they only make licensed crap. So not only do they have to make bad games, but bring down the brand with them. For those unaware of the outside world, so Americans, Little Britain was a comedy sketch show that basically made fun of certain stereotypes in British culture. Shock and gross out humour with many, many, many unflattering costumes, repeated catchphrase and crude jokes. It's, it hasn't aged well. It was kind of like Jackass, where your parents said, no, uh -uh, you can't watch it, it's not good for you, which really made you want to watch it more, really. So you would watch it late at night when your parents were asleep or when they weren't home and Really, you laugh at anything, it was that funny because you're a stupid kid. So that was what the game was trying to ride on, its popularity. This show was so popular, it rode the wave in the UK and it eventually spawned off spin-off after spin-off in America and I think that's it. But the important thing here is that it was popular and Blast Entertainment knew that. So it rode the wave with it. A year after the show ended. Made by Revolution Software Studios, published by the Shit Bomb, we have a collection of seven mini games, which star the titular characters from the show. So really, this has less content than Paddington Bear. At least that one had nine. But to its credit, they are all different, so there is more variety. Kinda. Of. First mini game stars Vicky Pollard, a high school girl who thinks she's all that, but she really ain't. Yeah, looking at this rendered model pretty much tells you what the show is like. So here we are in the first mini game, and almost instantly, I can see that the ground is a completely flat texture. There's no curb, and that annoys me a lot more than it should. It's your basic obstacle course with five different tracks to switch between, with, you guessed it, delayed controls. Okay, I'm serious. Paddington Bear? had more responsive controls than this piece of garbage. How, how do you do that? When you're not bored out of your mind playing this, feeling your senses being deprived of all sustenance, this special meter at the bottom decides to play this obnoxiously loud sound effect. <laughs> Essentially collecting CDs or something fills up the meter, much like SSX and its Uber meter. But while SSX had this over the top awesome move as your reward here. Oh my God, I still can't believe I just done that. Okay, cool, that was nice. But you know what the sad thing about this is? I can actually imagine someone getting good at this. There's just barely enough game here to warrant getting good at. Some person out there had the PS2 demo disc and Little Britain, that's it. 
So, obviously, he would just play the Ratchet and Clank demo for hours, but when he got bored of that, he got increasingly better at this one minigame, for he had nothing else to play. With the delayed controls, the course layouts, the combos, the tricks, I can honestly imagine someone putting in the time to max out that score. And it scares me. It really scares me. The next minigame stars Lou and Andy. The object of this minigame is to have Andy jump into the pool while doing as many tricks as he can while Lou is distracted. Yeah, Andy pretends to be wheelchair bound to get what he wants, that's, that's the whole premise of that. The idea is pretty basic, just dive as many times as you can. How can you screw that up? You spam X to walk. You have to mash X to make Lou walk from diving board to diving board for three minutes, including the swimming. On top of the spamming of the X button to select which board you want to jump off, you have to press, get this, L1. Why L1? What, what is with this publisher making you press unintuitive buttons to do basic commands? Why not the X button? Oh wait, you're spamming the fucking thing. Next game stars Marjorie Dawes, the leader of the Fat Fighters, while also being the most passive aggressive to fatties you'll ever see. And it's Pac-Man. It's zoomed in, ugly, no color, fucked controls, Pac-Man. How do you fuck up both a recognizable show and Pac-Man? Also, who eats cookies like that? To take a small break here, after every minigame clear, you get a small clip from the show, as to be expected. Like after playing the Vicky minigame, you get a Vicky clip. After playing as Andy and Lou, you get to see a skit of them. And after playing the Marjorie minigame, you get an Andy and Lou clip. What? In fact, out of the 7 of the 10 clips I was bothered to unlock, there is one each of Daffy, Emily, two of Vicky, and three of Andy and Lou. Playing favorites much? Next is Letty. She hates frogs. That's her thing. Here she is, squashing frogs. Whack-a-mole. Whack-a-frog. You wanna know how this game feels? There you go. Next is a soccer minigame. You kick a ball across a field while avoiding waddling kids to score three goals. Without a doubt, this is the ugliest game I've seen yet. Just, just look at this. Look at it. The best model here by far is the main character, Emily himself, or herself. It's it's terrible. And whenever you score a goal... <laughs> Next is based on Maggie. Now to summarize the character of Maggie, she's an astute old lady who is absolutely racist. Anything touched by a minority, she rejects. And when I mean she rejects... <sighs> Yep, that's, um, that's comedy, I guess. So with such ripe characters as this, to base a minigame off of, what could it possibly be about? It's Tetris. Cake. Ha! You thought that in a character about vomiting, there'd be vomiting in the minigame? Nah, nah, it's Tetris, you idiot. Nah, there's vomiting, of course. I'm at such a loss here. I'm just gonna put a clip from Old Marmalade's video about this onto here instead. It plays as good as it looks. Sickeningly terrible. Couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, literally. His accent's just divine. Let's just move on to the next one, where again, we play as a fat dude in skin-tight clothing. Absolutely unexpected. Here, you play as Daffy, the only gay in the village. He runs over and punches gay people. That's the game. A literal hate crime. It's also a copy of the Vicky minigame, so let's, let's move on before I pass out. Oh, we're done. Oh, we're done. Next fucking game. The Flintstones, Bedrock Racing. Who here thinks this is gonna be an echo fighter of wacky races? Yeah, let's pop this fucker in and have a go. A better showing than wacky races, I'll give you that. Plus, it's not in memory of someone, so the depression factor doesn't hit too hard. But let's actually start the game. Wow, it's a it's a reskin of wacky races. The fucking wow. Don't get me wrong, the controls are better, 
and the visuals actually look like the Flintstones. I mean, they still look like shit, but it's more than you can ask for from this publisher. Everything has been improved on the visuals, the music, the controls, for the most part. In fact, the only thing with a mild downgrade is there's no animation when you boost, unlike Wacky Racers. Here, you get the classic effect of the feet running across the ground, but there's no animation to make it look any more cartoony. But apart from that one detail misstep, I'm honestly surprised at the quality of this. And to be fair to what I just said, take this clip and compare it to literally any other PS2 game. Yeah. Blast set the bar pretty low. Bland, mind rotting, and the best thing I can say about this is that it's functional, which is exactly what Blast Entertainment encompasses. It even manifests themselves on the back of their game covers. Look at that disgusting orange gradient and that stupid winking bomb. And this is the better version of the back of the games, by the way. Usually they look like this, a horrible yellow, Four completely plain screenshots, awful text boxes in blood red, the weird borders around the boxes, the boring font, the deja vu, the deja vu, the deja vu? Why? What? What is this familiarity? 